A lovely evening and thanks for watching the news with me, Miriam Muntambo. First, the headlines. President Lazarus Jaguera reaffirms servant leadership and tribute to founding President Kamuzubanda. Political parties failed to observe COVID-19 preventative measures during the by-elections in March this year. In other news, an eight-year-old man becomes the center of attraction after marrying his 74-year-old fiancé. We have these plus many other stories. Please stay with us. <laughs> President Lazarus Jaguela has reaffirmed he will seek to serve and not to rule the people of Malawi. In his speech during commemorations marking this year's Kamuzu Day Memorial in Lilongwe, President Jaguela also said he will only work with people that share the same vision of serving Malawians. Audrey Kapalamula reports from the report in Lilongwe. A memorial service marking commemoration of the life of late Hastings Kamuzbanda, the first president of the country, took place at his mausoleum in Lilongwe, where different groups attended. The service was led by different religious leaders. Speaking at the event, Chakwila said the country can achieve the Malawi 2063 vision if it builds on the foundation that Kamuzu laid for the country. He added that it is possible to have a prosperous Malawi for all, where people can have access to quality health services, education, and bring dignity among Malawians. He said as the country's president, his desire is to save the nation. As such, he needs to work with people who share his vision. I am convinced that our nation's founder is the embodiment of a truth we must never allow ourselves to forget. Because he served this nation. But we must always be aware of the fact that presidential power is a terrific servant, but a terrible master. We now have the chance to restore presidential power to its place of service. We have a chance to use it to provide health care the way it was once used to build Kamuzu Central Hospital. Family Representative Ken Kandodo said... Rest in peace, he conceived this plan of the mausoleum. He, he did uh, include another stage. Uh, the first stage was to build the mausoleum, which he did, and he opened uh, on 14th May of 2006. Uh, but he did say uh, that he wanted to have a museum here where uh, memorabilia or, or things that Kamuzu was using like his motor vehicles, uh, the fly whisk and, and, and such things, to be, to be uh, exhibited here so that people can come and see how Kamuzo was, was like, how he was living, uh, but also to have a, a, a museum and a library where people would come and, and learn about Kamuzo. Minister of Tourism, Culture and Wildlife Michael Usi said there are plans to provide the area the necessary infrastructure as requested by Ikandodo and that the project will be undertaken once the ministry is adequately resourced. Banda died on 25 November 1997, and every year the country commemorates his life on 14th May. On Friday, St. Michael's and All Angels CCAP Church in Blanta held Malawi's founding president, Hastings Kamuzubanda. During memorial prayers in honor of Malawi's first president, the church's moderator, Chaplain Stephen, described Banda as a man who dedicated himself to serving God. James and Jauluga attended the prayers and now reports. The prayers were held right in the church the late Dr. Banda was congregating. The church's moderator, Chaplain Stevens, says it is Dr. Banda's good deeds which stand out to date, including the church building itself. He says in 1976, when the walls of the church were collapsing, Dr. Banda donated a lot of money to reinforce it. He was a member of this church, St. Michael and the Angels. And above all, he was a church of the Church of Scotland. So we thought it is wise to uh, celebrate his life. And in, in addition to that, we remember his good examples. 
the life he lived. Uh, we remember in 1976 that when the wars were separating, the wars of the church were about to fall, he donated a lot of money towards the rehabilitation of the church. So we feel uh, honored by uh, having him uh, in our midst uh, and that he's departed. We have to remember his good works. Malawi Congress Party's director of campaign, Moses Kunkuyu, who is also presidential advisor on chiefs and rural affairs, said Dr. Banda laid a strong foundation for the country and is worthy to be remembered. Just like the moderator did say when he was preaching, that every person will leave a legacy, and those legacies will determine whether people celebrate you or not. When we look at the life of Mr. Hessens from Zubanda, he left a legacy that as Malawians we ought to be celebrating. We are celebrating the foundations that were laid by this great son of the soil. Talk of infrastructure development, talk of education areas, talk of the areas of health. Even food security in agriculture, when you talk of food security today, that we are able to uh, boast that we have meals every day. These foundations were laid by none other than Dr. Hessing Samuzubanda. Go and inst uh, inspect the roads that we are using today. You see that a road that was built four decades ago is in very good shape, far much better shape than roads that were built just ten years ago. Dr. Banda died in 1997. In our special report today, Thomas Gijio takes a look at the legacy that Malawi's founding president, Kamuzubanda, left. Come back home to break their stupid federation. The life story of the first president of the Republic of Malawi, Dr. Hastings Kamuzubanda, is less known to detail. To many, it is controversial, and the reason being it was seditious to document Kamuzu's fact. So, by financing the struggle for independence and kept in touch with the elders in Nyasaland until he was recalled back in 1958 and led the struggle for independence until Malawi attained self rule. His leadership was marked by both successes and falls, but he had fundamentals which he valued for the new Malawi. He believed that agriculture was the hub of Malawi's economy and as such, he encouraged hard work in the fields in the production of both commercial and subsistence crops. Today, tobacco still remains a key cash crop to the economy of Malawi. Recalling how he struggled with education, Kamuzu raised the education standards by building not only secondary schools, but the University of Malawi and its constituent colleges. He went a mile ahead and built a world-class academy, the Kamuzu Academy, at which every student of intellect, rich or poor, could receive excellent education. He built it at the site where his first school was in Kasungu. Kamuzu established free university education, which was impartial in its intake and like policies adopted by democratic leaders, such as the quota system. This place is for classical education. Greek, Latin. I want that to be clearly understood by everybody. If you do not like Latin, don't come here. To further develop the nation, Kamuzu went ahead to build a new capital in Lilongwe, which was financed by the South African apartheid regime. This brought a lot of mixed reactions from other countries, but the end result was that Malawi had a new capital in Lilongwe. No African state! No African country! Must have anything to do with South Africa. Anything to do with Rhodesia! Kamuzu was ambitious for Malawi to have state-of-the-art structures, roads and buildings they are built to durability and quality. Kamuzu led Malawi basing on four cornerstones unity, loyalty, obedience, and discipline. Having ruled Malawi for 31 years, Kamuzu's era came to an end in 1994, and the last gesture he showed shall forever be remembered. He gracefully accepted a loss in the 1994 general elections and congratulated President elect. Dr. Erson Bakiri Muluzi, who became Malawi's first Madipati leader. This, 
he did even before counting of the polls was completed. He is remembered at the very end of his life that he accepted defeat after the 1994 polls and he wished success, good luck and all the best to the leader who was to take over, Bakiri Muluzi. It's a lesson to us that whenever we vote, we should not end up in courts. We should accept defeat. We should accept my time is gone. Malawians have spoken. In that way, we can learn a lot from the past, from the one-party era, to democracy, and we move forward as a nation. What lessons can new leaders learn? And this is the news on Times Television TTV. We'll be right back with more news. Right up. Your gums hurt? Yeah. Does your toothpaste contain sage, eucalyptus, mirror, chamomile? All that in one toothpaste? Yes, try Colgate Herbal. Colgate Herbal contains nature's best herbs and Colgate's fluoride technology to give you strong teeth and healthy gums. Ah, Colgate Herbal. Let's go. Colgate Herbal. Malawi Electoral Commission has expressed worry over non-compliance to the COVID-19 preventative measures during the by-elections in March this year. Officials of the Commission say this during a review meeting with stakeholders in Doha on Friday. Wesley Gawusi has the details. A representative of various political parties and all election stakeholders were meeting in Doha to review how March 30, 2021 by-elections were conducted. Speaking during the opening of the meeting, make chairperson for audit committee, Commissioner Anthony Mukumba, who represented the Malawi Electoral Commission, make chairperson, says the meeting was crucial as they were highlighting a number of issues which they need to do better in future. Mukumba says it is worrisome that most political parties did not adhere to COVID-19 preventive measures. You see, in any election, the issues that emerge, okay, new as well as old, and uh, would be naive to move on to the next election without reflecting or not actually happened. And so this meeting is a reflection of what happened, where we did well and where we did wrong. Uh, challenges that we faced and opportunities that we can harness. And so it's very important that um, after an election we sit down, all stakeholders that manage the election, and be able to honestly reflect on what went wrong, what, went, what we did well, and the challenges that we faced. So that together, as we go to the next elections, some of those challenges are eliminated, and those um, good things that we did are enhanced. Malawi Congress Party MCP Director of Elections, Elias Chakwela, says the meeting is crucial as political parties and other stakeholders look at how they performed in the ended by elections. He says COVID-19 affected their campaign and there were no control measures. It is true that uh, we may not, as political parties, follow the COVID uh, uh, measures during the campaign meetings. Because campaign is about mobilizing people. So even if you wanted to meet a few people, but I think the campaign by its nature, it is a, uh, something that invites as many people as possible. All political parties that participated in the by-elections, including returning officers, attended the meeting. Meanwhile, the Malawi Electoral Commission has announced it will hold a by-election for... ...inspection update and inspection of voters register 
in Lalanje and Chikwembere wards and in Katabe Central constituency will be done from May 26 to June 8, 2021. In an interview on Friday, MAKE Director of Media and Public Relations, Sangwani Mafridwa, said for Nkatabe there will be no registration of new voters, adding that only candidates who contested during the 2019 disputed polls will be allowed to contest this time around. The candidates that contested in 2019 uh, will be the same ones to contest this time around and uh, they cannot change affiliation. Uh, if the candidate opts to withdraw from the process, it means the party will go into the election uh, without a, a candidate because the laws do not allow for nomination by substitution. Nkadabe Central constituency became vacant after the Supreme Court of Appeal nullified the seat over electoral irregularities during the 2019 parliamentary polls. Raf Muhone of People's Party appealed to court to declare the seat vacant which was being held by Simon Vua Kaunda of Democratic Progressive Party. After the announcement, UGM and Malawi Congress Party said they would not feature candidates but instead would support Mhone. During the 2019 elections, MCP had Jole Nyimba as his candidate while UTM's torch bearer was Justin Banda. This means the June 29 show will be for Vu Wakaunda and Mhone. In an interview on Friday, Mhone said he is ready for the elections and the support from the Tonsi partners entails that they have confidence in him that he is the right candidate. In his reaction, Vu Wakaunda said he already won the elections clean and square and it will be a walkover this time around. In the disputed 2019 parliamentary elections, Mhone amassed 6,507 votes against the Vua Kaunda's 6,515 votes, winning by a margin of 8 votes. An 80-year-old man from Chikwawa district has become the center of attraction after wedding his 74-year-old fiancé in holy matrimony. Lady Sonny Chifunde has told the times he decided to marry his sweetheart, Mary Divala, after charity organization built him a house. Chifunde says he could not afford to stay alone in the house, and Isaac Salima has the story. In what would be thought as a scene in a movie, the 80-year-old and 74-year grannies are now husband and wife after tying a knot last Saturday. This was not an anniversary wedding ceremony, but a new marriage. Ngabu Trading Center in Jikwawa was last week brought to a standstill at the two love beds exchanged marriage vows. It was started when Ngabu based Pashero Charitable Trust had rescued the man from the jaws of poverty by building him a house. The man said he could not stay alone in the house and asked the organization to help him find his better half. Speaking from La Boza village in traditional authority in Gabu, Chivunde said he is happy to have found another love after his first wife died some two decades ago. I am very happy that now I have a good house. I am also a happy person because I now have a wife. Pashero Chadabu Trust Executive Director Feria Maloya said they are pleased that their initiative of transforming lives of vulnerable people took this step. I'm so, so happy because it's like he, he had, he was vulnerable, but now he's a happy married man after over 20 years of being a widower. And what I can, I can tell you uh, again is that even the lady uh, had the, the same challenges as the man because she has been a widow for also over 20 years. So to make them united and... Traders have been using such skills since the government announced the said farmers' gate prices. Director General Simon Mandala has since called on farmers to ensure all weighing skills have a certification seal. Patience Lunda reports. Mandara made their remarks Thursday when MBS was awarding certificates to various companies in the northern region. Since government announced the 2021-2022 minimum farm gate prices, 
Many people have been arrested for defying farm gate prices and for using uncertified weighing scales in districts such as Doha, Salima and Karonga. I to make sure that uh, the farmers really benefit from their sweat and therefore we are making sure that um, those buying produce from farmers must be used, it must be using the scales or weighing instruments that have been verified by the Maui Bureau of Tanga. Meanwhile, state-run Agricultural Development and Marketing Corporation, ADMAC, has also started buying farm produce from small-scale farmers nationwide. On her part, MPS board member Joyce Aziz Banda said the Bureau will continue conducting market surveillance to take out all products that are not approved by the Bureau in order to promote fair trade and protect buyers. One of the awardees, Managing Director of Nyalwanga Farms, Cecilia Sedega, said the certification by MBS is crucial because it assures customers of quality. The of this certification means that we have been following all the rules and regulations as laid by Malawi Bureau of Standards. Um, we're really, really happy. MBS has this year awarded certificates to 295 individuals and companies running various kinds of businesses, 100 of which are new registrants. Well, that's all we had for you this evening, but before we go,